Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. So there's some knitting, some spinning, sometimes crochet, sometimes sewing. You never really know what we're going to get up to. I also like to chat a bit about living on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers. We love raising chickens and gardens and animals and spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. How are y'all today? I hope that you're having a wonderful week. I took the week off last week both from making a new video and from recording the audio podcast, which also has the name The Young Folk Knits Podcast. So you can find that wherever podcasts are streamed. And it was nice. I'm glad I took a little bit of a break. It was my kids last week of summer vacation before we started back school in earnest this week. And we enjoyed a little bit of extra time off. The weekend before, on that Saturday, Becky from A Hand at Letter and I decided to go to our very first yarn crawl. <laughs> the Arkansas Yarn Crawl. It, it, what, it's Saturday. What's the day? <laughs> the 20-something? Yeah. 22nd, maybe. Right? Yes. And Becky's got our stops planned out. Where are we going first? We're going to go to Arkansas Yarn Co. And it's a real-life knitting store with real-life yarn. We're going to switch some yarn. <laughs> We're going to see people who knit, too. I'm excited. <laughs> Too. And then we're going to Arkadelphia. I think knit unto, knit unto others in Arkadelphia. So we will show you all the yarn that we squish and we'll take you along with us. We've made it to Arkansas Yarn Co. Look how cute this is. People can knit outside. Arkadelphia and we are at Knit Unto Others for our second stop on the Arkansas Yarn Crawl. We're gonna get our passport stamped. All right, ready? I'm ready. Eating. 
his cookies in our future. So the Arkansas Yarn Crawl was happening this past week. I think it ended this past Saturday. And we went to a couple of yarn stores we've never got to visit before. So she came to my house and we loaded up in the morning and drove almost two and a half hours to Malvern, which is quite a bit south of us. And we went to the Arkansas Yarn Co. yarn shop. And it was such a fun yarn shop. There was a lot of people there. And Lori, which is the owner, had some really great yarns. She had some great notions, bags. There were some different yarn dyers that were there. There was also some jewelry booth set up. It was just really fun. <laughs> we had a great time. We got to meet some awesome people and I loved squishing a lot of different yarns I've never actually seen in person. It was well worth the trip. We then headed to Arkadelphia to another yarn shop which is Knit Unto Others. Then we came back through Little Rock. We had a really nice dinner and as that was finishing up, I got a phone call from my husband with some devastating news. Apparently, our dog, Betsy, was home alone because we were all out and about. She found my knitting bags. One of them that she got into had my Rhinebeck cardigan in it. I had knit a pocket. She got the pocket out. She chewed up my chow goo needle, the pocket, and a whole skein of yarn, which I ended up having to throw away. It was painful, really painful. Apparently she got a taste for the wool because this past weekend we left as well and she got into one of my test knits and she chewed up a whole skein of yarn. I was able to save the project, thankfully. That would have been too much to handle. I, I've decided I'm gonna have to start hiding my yarn far away from anywhere she could possibly get to it. Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. It's a good thing she's cute, that's all I'll say. Otherwise though, I have been busy doing a lot of making. I've had to switch up what I've been working on a bit because my hands and my elbows, my wrists, everything has been causing me a lot of pain lately. I have had an inflammation flare up and when that happens the knitting I normally do that doesn't cause me pain will cause a lot of pain. <laughs> so I've had to switch to wool and just do very brief mixed fiber knitting. Very brief amounts of time and not do 100% cotton for long periods and that way I am able to still knit but I think my my flare-up is going down I'm feeling better today so I see more cotton in my horizon I have some knitting and some sewing to share today also some really fun yarn to squish but I'm gonna start off with a project I shared last time In case this is your first episode, this year I am going to be attending Rhinebeck for the first time ever. My friend Becky and I are going. It has been a crazy outfit planning extravaganza for Rhinebeck. We decided to start a little cow, which is called the Rhinebeck Caravan Cow. So if you would like to knit something that you would wear to Rhinebeck if you were going, so even if you're not going, you can participate, or something that you are planning to wear to Rhinebeck. Either goes, you can knit garments, accessories, whatever you want. It's all welcome. Just share it on Instagram and use the tag Rhinebeck Caravan Cow. The first thing that I am knitting for that cow is the Rosenland top, which is a pattern by Sari Nordland, and I am in love. I'm knitting this with Pearl Soho's Cotton Pure, which they very kindly gifted to me. This is the color Warm Rock, and it is a 100% cotton yarn. And I did a lot of knitting on this pretty quickly, in a pretty short period of time. I have joined it in the round. And it's cables and lace, <laughs> so not even just really straightforward stockinette or garter. 
And because of that, I definitely felt a major flare in my hands while my inflammation has been high. This is a culprit that has caused me to have to walk back a bit from the cotton. Very sad because I think it's just incredibly beautiful. I love it so much. I love the yarn. It doesn't feel heavy. It feels nice though and it's got some drape to it. I'm just very excited and I really want to wear it. I've mentioned it before that I plan on wearing it more as a vest than as a top alone. That could change though. <laughs> we'll see. I'm definitely a vest girl. I love vests. I love vests over dresses. I love vests over shirts. I love vests by themselves. I think this is going to get a lot of wear, but it's just so stunning. This is the back and it has these cable sections. This is honeycomb cable sections. And then it has this really beautiful Japanese lace pattern down the middle of both the back and the front. And it has some really pretty seed stitch here. So I think that I'm going to hopefully get back to this soon. Charts are very nice. I love charts whenever there's any kind of cables. That's definitely my favorite thing to follow and lace as well. I really do love knitting from charts. I did want to wait until I had finished this ball of yarn and then go back and do my collar. But I think I might actually pause while my hands are re recuperating. I may pause. I think I may take my other ball and go ahead and do my neck. And I might even do my arms, my armholes. Because it's definitely a little bit more easy knitting. Again, I'm holding it in my Shop Knitting Nelly bag. Absolutely love it. And she has mentioned donating a bag as a prize for the knit along. So sometimes her bags are so popular they're hard to get one in an update so this is a great opportunity <laughs> to possibly get a bag if you participate in the cow next up i'm going to show you a cardigan that i have cast on and it is the latte cardigan which is a pattern by kirsten joel and I ran across this pattern because the pattern was knit up in Camellia Fiber Company's, one of my absolute favorite yarns, Yak Base, which is unbelievably luxurious. It's yak, silk, and wool, and it's just, it's amazing. Actually, this is a skein of it right here. It is called the CFC Yak DK. is 65% merino, 20% silk, and 15% yak. You get 230 yards per 100 grams. And this is the color coffee. I think that this is gonna be a really fun, oversized, textured cardigan. I definitely want this to be oversized. I don't want the arms to be wildly oversized and huge, but I want it to be long and I want to be able to wrap up in it. The first thing you knit are your pockets and I think that's great because I just used it as my gauge swatch instead of knitting a gauge swatch and a pocket. <laughs> so here it is. You can see it's got quite a bit of stretch to it. I have finished, have finished both pockets. Betsy chewed up one of these <laughs> and I had to re-knit it but that's okay. We'll look forwards, not backwards. <laughs> the texture, I absolutely love. It kind of looks, I think from a distance, like moss stitch or seed stitch, but it's not. It's, it's different, but still very easy, easy to memorize pattern. And it's very silky. I think that the silk content in it will also make it cooler than a fluffy woolen spun yarn. I think that would be very warm, which I don't really need too much around here. So I'm very excited about this cardigan. I've been trying to decide between this cardigan for Rhinebeck or the Minnow cardigan, which is a pattern by Knitting Deer on Instagram, because I have some uh, Fiber Spates Cumulus Surrey yarn and some Knitting for Olive Merino yarn, both in a sort of creamy color that I could hold together to make the Minot cardigan. And I just can't quite decide 
which one I want for Ryan Beck. They're both so beautiful. I have, I've kind of landed on this one, but who knows? We'll, we'll see in the next little bit what I decide to go with. The other thing I have been knitting on is my Tessin I can't share much about. I'll just kind of hold it like this. This is my pullover I'm knitting in the Fiber Company Luna, Luma. It's a Luma, not Luna. And it's in the color Aegean. This yarn is 50% wool, 25% cotton, 15% linen, and 10% silk. So it's a 50% wool, 50% plant fiber yarn. And you can tell it's really nice. It doesn't feel heavy. It feels very light and it feels nice and breathable. I think it's gonna be the perfect yarn for me here in Arkansas. I'm very excited. Again, I'm, I'm holding this in my mood bag, which they very kindly gifted me. I love this bag, I use it a lot. It just holds everything, <laughs> it's so big. That pattern should, the testnet is due at the end of August, so that pattern should be ready to chat about probably the beginning of September. I've got a couple of other things that I'm going to wait until the next episode to chat about because I also want to show some yarn and some sewing that I've been doing. So Kaz from HodgePodge Skeins got in touch with me and she very generously sent me one of her fall autumn mystery boxes and whenever I opened it I thought it was absolute perfection. Just had a brain freeze moment. She's in, is she in Australia or New Zealand? The boxes come with three skeins that you open as a surprise and each one has a little something with it. Well, the first one I opened was this beauty. Oh, it's gorgeous. It was the month of March and it is a four ply. 75% merino, 25% nylon, 100% Australian yarn. And I just think this is beautiful. This is definitely a color that I gravitate towards. I've bought skeins very, very similar to this in color. I just think it's really stunning. It came with Australia's healthiest tea range, the tea tonic. The next one is the month of April. How fun is this? Beautiful, look at this. It's just glowing. It came with this Australian natural soap and it's a peppermint lavender. Mm, this is May. Oh my goodness. Ah, I love it so much. And it came with a beautiful stitch marker. So here they all are together and I think they make a really beautiful fade. I would absolutely love to knit this up into a shawl. Y'all should definitely check out HodgePodge Skeins. Thank you so much for sending me that box. I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to start knitting with it. I have also been doing a little bit of sewing and I've told y'all before I hate sewing and I really do. I don't enjoy it. It's very different for me. Knitting is a process thing. Sometimes I don't even wear the things that I knit, but I love making them so much that the process is what I live for. With sewing, it's completely the opposite. I hate the process of doing it, but I love the end product enough that I'm willing to suffer through it. So I made a couple of different things. First on my list, was a ZW gather dress, which I have been seeing everywhere. Apparently it's the dress of the moment. And I definitely wanted one. I've had some beautiful linen fabric from Blackbird Fabrics. It's out of Canada and I have desperately been wanting to use it in something. I've gone all over the place trying to decide exactly what I wanted to use it for. I finally decided on this dress and I love it. However, I will say that it is very much modified from the original pattern in certain ways. The size of the dress you end up with is going to be based on the width of your fabric and this was 53 inch. This was either 53 inch 
or 50, 58 inch. Anyway, it was in the 50, 50 inch group and it just turned out way too big. This dress is definitely supposed to be oversized, but too much oversized is very unflattering on me because I have a large difference between my upper bust and my regular mid bust circumference and it just makes it look like I'm wearing a circus tent. So I did take out a lot of fabric both on the sides and a lot in the skirt too. Another thing I did was lengthen the bodice which I did before I cut it out. So I think the bodice is supposed to be around 14, 13 and a half inches, 14 inches, something like that. And I increased it by two inches. And that was definitely something that I needed to do. If I make this dress again, well, I am going to make it again. I've already got some fabric cut out from Merchant and Mills, which I will hopefully show y'all next time. But I definitely need to lengthen the bodice. I'm 5'8", and... It's just not long enough for me. It hits me right across the middle of the chest, which again, I don't like. So once I did that, I was very pleased. I also made the sleeves a lot smaller than what it called for. And I'm happy with that as well. I did the full button placket all the way down. And it's just a great flowy linen dress. I'm very, very happy with it. I think that the latte cardigan I'm knitting will be so pretty with this dress. I think it's going to be awesome. However, once again, I really did not enjoy the process of making this. Every summer I'll sew like three or four things and then when I'm done, I don't want to see a sewing machine again until next summer. So I ended up making this Augustina boxy top and this is a free shirt pattern. From I believe the fabric store. I'll link it below with everything else as well. But I got some fabric remnants from Blackbird Fabrics. Every every so often they'll have a remnant sale. And this was some double gauze in their citron colorway and they had like 1.2 meters of it. So I snatched that up and I definitely knew I wanted to make a top out of it. I couldn't decide exactly which top I wanted. I was leaning towards the Strata top. But in the end, I decided to go with the Augustina boxy top and I really like it. It's huge. It feels <laughs> very, very big. Sometimes I feel like with so liberated patterns, I need to go up a size compared to what I would normally make with this, I could definitely go down a size. It's got a lot of positive ease. The gauze seams were very annoying. They're shedding everywhere. Another thing I really want to do every year is get a serger. I always want to and I never do it. I've wanted to get one for probably the last 10 years. This year I finally did it and look at these seams y'all. They look so good. I love it. And I feel like this has changed my sewing life forever. I may actually enjoy it. Well, I mean, let's not get carried away, but we'll see. I did not have enough length in the fabric to make it with the front and back both to fit on there. And so I cut out the front. And then what I did was I cut out the back, but I put the bottom of the back where the fabric ended and I laid it that way so that even though I didn't have enough fabric lengthwise, the bottom of the back is what was cut off. So then what I did was cut a strip of fabric from the side and I sewed it onto the back to make it the right length and I actually did it a little bit longer than the front and I've got kind of a split hem and not really high low. I mean, there's no swoop to it. It's straight across the front, but it is, it is shorter in the front than the back. So maybe, maybe you could say high low, but I'm very, very pleased with it. I'm, I love it. I think it's amazing and I will make more. The neckline was very wide on me. And again, I just feel like the whole top was a little bit big. I think I chose a size too big. So next time I will make at least one size smaller and we'll see how that goes. 
That is all I have to share for this week. I do have some exciting things next week, so make sure and check back so you don't miss that. In fact, make sure and subscribe, and that way you won't miss out on any new video content. As always, all of your likes and comments help my channel out so very much. I deeply appreciate your support. I hope you enjoy your making time this week, and until next time, happy knitting, y'all.